All right, welcome back to have another SPR or DMR rifle. I'm a big fan of these kind of setups. I'm gonna talk through how I have it set up, <clears throat> what I prefer on it, and how I've kind of utilized it in some competitions to include quantified performance. So the heart of this gun is actually a BCM DeFore upper. So it's a Cowell DeFore uh, spec barrel. So it is a 16 inch barrel with a one and 7.7 twist. So that twist rate is kind of the unique thing about it. Uh, it is optimized for 77 grain Black Hills. Uh, it shoots everything else pretty darn good too. So that's kind of like the load it's designed for. And that's the load that you would probably want to shoot out of a 5.56 rifle in any kind of long range engagement. It is a stainless steel barrel. It's been nitrided. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Big fan of it. Uh, my only complaint is I can't buy just the barrel. I gotta buy a complete upper. So I started out with that. Uh, I had the uh, KMR rail, BCM's proprietary rail system on it. Had that taken off. Had this uh, Geisley Mark I rail installed and kind of went from there. We see up front, I also took off the BCM muzzle device and subbed it on a Surefire I think this is a 212 flash hider. It's kind of an old school muzzle device. Just a big fan of Surefire flash hiders. Uh, and that was a pretty easy uh, modification for me to do there. Inside, I have a standard BCM bulk carrier group. There's nothing wrong with it, so no reason to change that. I have the Geyser Super 42 buffer and spring. A little bit more reliable, I think. It provides a little smoother recoil impulse. And then, big thing for user interface, of course, is the Geyser SSAE trigger. So up front, I got a white light that really has no application uh, in a quantified performance match or a gas gun match or PRS kind of match. But I think every rifle that you might do work with should have a light on it. I'm working on grabbing uh, a pressure pad that kind of come up here so I don't have to come over or under kind of dramatically to activate it. This actually was a uh, X300, I'm sorry, not X300, uh, Surefire E2T Defender. A head that I replaced on my carry light, and then I had a spare tail cap that kind of built a light off of that. We see I got the Arasaka mount that mounts onto the uh, Geisley Mark I or the uh, HK416 SMR rail. On the bottom, I got one pick section for a Harris bipod, and I'll put another kind of close to the uh, receiver here. That way, uh, I have the option of where I want to put the bipod. So I found uh, shooting quantified performance the few times I've done it, uh, getting in and out of the barricades, you know, a bipod up here is really not useful. But if I put it uh, closer, I get the advantage of being able to get in and out of ports uh, without any issue. Then I also get to kind of fold the bipod down and hold on to it in the prone when it's closer to me. So it helps stabilize it that way. Uh, the last match that I shot, one of the stages was actually shooting off of a bench like a table. Uh, and I found that it was pretty uh, helpful to be able to hold the bipod uh, when in that position on the table. So one of the things I've learned uh, in a Kyle the Four class was putting that bipod a little bit closer, coming under, holding on to it on slick surfaces. I think that that pays off and not enough guys do that. I'll also notice I got my uh, 550 cord here to help me kind of pull it down if I want to just grab up tight and pull the cord. I can get both legs down pretty quickly. I will say that most of the stages that I've seen, I don't need to go from not using a bipod to having a bipod. So oftentimes it's just on the gun when I need it and then off the gun when I don't. And when I don't, I'll be using uh, either a game changer or like the X-Wing bag. Speaking of the X-Wing bag, I have a video on that and I'll link it uh, down below in the description. I'll see if I can do it as well up in the video itself. So that kind of covers the front side of the gun, uh, the sling. You know, just any good two-point adjustable works. I kind of like this one. It's from uh, Grave Solutions. Um, it's captured. There's no end tail running. It has a pull tab, not a hook loop, right? So I can come through here with my hook if I want to or grab it. But it kind of lays flat so I don't have a big big snag hazard like I would with a loop of 550 cord. So I like that. And what they also did was they put some elastic in here, some bungee cord. Right, so when I fold the sling up, I can come under itself. It will kind of contain uh, the sling on the rifle without any uh, extraneous equipment. Back to the lower receiver. Uh, I like my SPR grip, you guys know that. I find especially with coming down off safe, 
and it keeps my hand in a consistent position. I've been said a hundred times, I think at this point, but being able to know that when I grab the rifle, put the weapon on fire, my finger is always like in the same spot. And there's no real chance of me going high or low. I think that really pays off, especially with precision marksmanship. Well, note I got the HRF Concepts Magwell. Uh, if you're doing a speed reload at quantified performance, you're probably not doing well, uh, but it's good to have it just in case. I think that, you know, for the extreme low weight and pretty much no bulk added, this is kind of a no-brainer for an accessory. I have a Magpul, a 40-round PMAG. So for me, uh, I like not thinking about ammo at all. So even if I know a stage only needs 12 rounds, I will put in a 40-round PMAG if I know I will not need to go prone. So just removing any thought of running dry uh, helps me just mentally focus on the task at hand. That's kind of like shooting open division, right? Like I'm not thinking about reloads, I'm just thinking about shooting. So I like using a 40 round PMAG. If I have to go prone and use a bipod, I'll use a 20 round PMAG. And I'll always keep one extra mag either in my uh, calf pocket and kind of the elastic of the cry pants or my back pocket for just that emergency uh, reload and peace of mind. Up here, you know, the optic setup, I think this is really like a, a top top-notch configuration. I've gotten some questions about how I have the micro red dot mounted. So I think for a precision gun or kind of like precision light, you know, like a DMR gun, putting it up top really helps because you can keep it at max power, find your target through the red dot, and then just duck down into uh, the optic. Even at matches where you know where the targets are, um, just getting to position, you might be a little bit off, 10, 15, 20 degrees off, and then you're hunting, and you don't want to have the hunt through at 6 or 8 or 10 power. You can just look over the uh, ocular end of this optic, through the red dot, find your target, and then get right back down into your, your magnified optic uh, with no issue. There's a host of other reasons I like the optic here. I think I made a video about that prior, um, but for... PRS, quantified performance, you know, SPR type gun, I think being able to do that quick target acquisition really is a huge selling point for putting your red dot up top as opposed to off at a 45. And then people always ask, you know, what about dialing, right? Like you put your, your optic behind the, the turret, right? How do, you, how do you dial? Well, the first thing I would say is that you probably should not be dialing with a reticle like this. And I'll drop, I'll drop that up here uh, in the screen so you can see it. But it has all the data right in that Christmas tree and in that center stadium line that you need uh, to shoot out of the distances that this rifle re requires. So you do 100 yard zero, you know what your holds are, right? And then you shoot with the reticle. You don't have to dial. That's why this optic doesn't have a zero stop. That's why it has a, a capped turret. You're supposed to zero it and then leave it and then never dial again once you're done zeroing. However, uh, there's some advantages to dialing as well, right? So I'm not blind to those. Uh, I think that you know a lot of guys, they have it right. What they'll do is they will dial to like the nearest target. So say the nearest target is at you know 200, they'll dial half a mil, and then a target that's at say 600, right? Instead of holding 4.3, they're holding like 3.8 mils, right? So it's less of a hold and they're keeping more of the target in the center of that uh, reticle. I have no problem coming back through here, like at the angle I'm at right now and looking and seeing where uh, my center is at and dialing from there, okay? These things also have clicks. So big thing at some schools uh, was dialing your optic without looking at it. So coming up and feeling and counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten clicks. Each click is a tenth of a mil. I just dial one mil and then coming back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And knowing that I'm back on zero. So even if I couldn't see it, like right now I can see it, no problem. I would be able to make my adjustments off of feel, all right, and then not have an issue. So the dialing is done prior to the stage. So being able to see it from behind the gun is a non-issue. You're not dialing this optic for elevation when you're in the firing position. You're dialing it when you're off the line and stage planning. Um, so that is really not an issue for me. Again, 
Like you shouldn't really have to dial this gun ever, but you can kind of cheat in the competition and dial it uh, for your stage and then just go from there. So my little rule of thumb is that if I'm playing that game, I'm trying to be super fast and cheap. I will dial and I'll keep the cap uh, in the front pocket of my pants. That way I know I've dialed. And when I finish the stage, I go back, right? It really pops out me that there's no cap on. Go, go back to zero, put the cap on. So before the stage, cap off, dial, cap in the pocket. I shoot the stage, I finish, I immediately go to zero and put the cap back on. That way I'm never in a situation where I have uh, dope on the gun that shouldn't be there. I don't know about it. It should always be at zero when it's at rest, so to speak. I really like this setup, guys. I think there's a lot going for this. I think the 16 inch barrel is a perfect balance of speed and accuracy. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I know I threw a lot into this video. There's a lot to say just about shooting and this kind of setup. Uh, so let me know what you guys want to know more about and I'll keep cranking out the content. Thanks.